All right, so uh, we're in the front yard just running some basic tests right now. And I wanted to put Tony's antenna up uh, to see what it looked like on the meter. Uh, the coax is fine, Tony, so it's not that. Uh, but I will tell you this, that it is a little long. It's one to one at 13,700. Now at uh, 14,200, which is about where I'm gonna do the center frequency, I think it's a 2.4. So I'm gonna show you uh, this antenna right now and where it's at on the, on the meter. All right, so this is Tony's antenna right here on the meter. Try to get that thing focused up. All right, and you can see it's uh, at 13.7, it's one to one with an impedance, which is the Z right here at 55. So at 14,200, 200, we're at 2.4 with 116 on the impedance. Uh, so that ain't gonna work. So in fairness to Tony, we're gonna have to trim his antenna. Uh, it came terminated and clearly it's, uh, it's not tuned. So I'm gonna cut the terminations off and uh, see if I can make it work. It's a little long. I'm gonna try folding it back on itself first and see how much I need to cut off. But uh, yeah, we need, to, we need to level the playing field a little bit here. So each of the legs, by the way, are up at about two feet, nine inches off of the ground, uh, which is about, about where I put them when I, uh, when I put my speaker wire up too. So uh, flat ground, I'll show you that right now, just in the front yard. All right, so we just got the, the mast up right here. You can see the coax run out over there. And then I've got the orange cables up. So I'll tell you what the measurements are on the apex. But uh, it's just terminated off right here, right now. But I'm gonna take and fold these things back on itself and just uh, tape it down and see what I can do. But this right here is about two feet off of the ground. I'll have to get my foot in there. Two feet off of the ground. Uh, there so, uh, from right there. And that's the angle looking at it that way. From the apex down to the ground is just about 12 feet. So that's, uh, I just had to measure that, but I can't do it uh, and hold the GoPro at the same time. But I did just measure it. We're 12 feet off of the ground right there, which is acceptable. So 12 feet off of the ground. Uh, it only needs about 11 and some change but 12 feet off the ground is about my typical deployment anyway. So we'll call that acceptable and our target for uh, all these installs that we're gonna do. 12 feet off the ground at the apex and then two and a half to three feet off the ground at each one of the legs. We're at a 45 degree angle. All right, I folded it back about six inches on itself. And uh, first try, I got it at 1.1 to one and 58 on the ohms, which is right there. At 14,100, I'm at 1.1 1 .1 and 53 ohms ish. And 14 flat, 1.4, 53, 13.916, so we're there. Sweep the whole band. Look at that. Let's go to 14,200, 1 to 1 and 57. And 14,300, 1.3 and 64. And 14,400, we're at 1.5 and 73. So the goal was 14.185 or 14200 and at 14200 we're at the 1 to 1 and 57 which is you know completely acceptable. All right, we're at 14200. The impedance is at 59 or 60 but we're at 1.3. The white line on the bottom is your uh, SWR, the yellow line is your impedance, but 14,100, we're at 60 on the Z, 1.5. 14, 1.7 at 62, that's the bottom end. 14,3, 1 1.3 and 62 on the ohms. And uh, 14,4, so we're pretty flat on the band. The impedance is uh, floating around 60 the entire time, but that could be adjusted. This is going to be the KG6HQD antenna and uh, same exact setup we had. We're 12 feet up at the apex. We're a little higher up off of the ground on both of them because we trimmed it. Uh, we're about four feet high, uh, but it's the same, but everything else is the same. Everything's the same. Not as long of a run of coax uh, or feed line, if you will, but uh, look at this. 1.3 
at 14200 1.3 with a Z of 63. So we're almost exactly the same because the legs are set up exactly the same. It's all about the legs on where it's at. So, all right, we had an airplane coming over, so we're doing this again. But 14200, we're at 1.3 with a 63 on the uh, ohms. Ah, change this over. 14100, we're at 1.5. And 64, 14, we're at 1.8 and 71. You can see it's going the other direction. I think this was too little higher. 14, 300, we're at 65 and 1.4. I think I turned this at 14, 230 is where I initially tuned this thing to, but that's close enough. I mean, you ask anybody, that is definitely, uh, that's workable right there. So we got both antennas tuned almost identical. I mean, we're talking a smidge it off. We're 1.3 versus 1.4. The ohms are 63 versus 62. Uh, none of that stuff matters really, I don't think. That is good enough for antenna wars, if you ask me. And that is with this shorter run. I think there's probably about eight more feet of, uh, of the feed line there. The feed line actually is probably the same length overall, but it, it's just a little bit longer. I know that that RG316 is 25 feet, but the numbers now between the two antennas are the same. So for tomorrow's part of the test, uh, we're going to put them on the, the machine and see how they come up on Whisper on a controlled environment. So that's it for right now. All right, it's day two, and we're at the park by my house. Nice open field. And then we got some weather over there where the boys are at. But we're going to start out with the HQD speaker wire antenna. Um, I use this high-vis line so you can see it. And I'm going to show you some stuff right now so you can see. So these are two feet, nine inches high from the legs on each one. The antenna, the apex, I've got it exactly at 12 feet from where that center point is down to the ground and two feet, nine inches over there. That's where we're at. The speaker wire is running up to the U-kits and we are at 14200, a dead on at 50 ohms, Tony, and a 1.3. You can see I tuned this, I remember telling you, I tuned this for a little bit higher. Uh, 14300, we are one to one and 49 ohms. 14400, you can see it's the butt, but look at that big giant dip right there. So this is out in the sterile field environment. Everything is right in the ballpark, better than yesterday because I adjusted the legs. So 14200, 14300, 1.0 at 49. Come on, Tony. Doesn't get much better than that. So we're gonna give the speaker wire the run first. We're gonna do CW, we're just gonna call out for a while, and I'm gonna try to log some different uh, RBNs. So that's what we're gonna do right now. All right, we're finally up and running here. Now we're just transmitting uh, the call sign several times. You can hear it, that's my call sign going off. I'm using Elecraft KX2 Utility. Just doing my call sign. There's the frequency we're on right there. And we got the HQD speaker wire antenna up. So we'll just sit here and do this for a while and see if we get spotted on the RBN a few times. About two batteries. I don't know if I'm just going to burn one battery down until it quits working, pop the other one in, and try that one with a different antenna. But uh, for right now, we're just going to keep on uh, keep on doing this for right now and see what happens. Uh, I'm not 100% sure on all the settings because it did an update uh, right when I plugged it in for more update. But it seems like everything is working right now. So let's see what happens. All right, KH2BRK, you can hear that thing pounding in there. Look at that. Pounding in there, KH2BRK. That's such a solid signal. Thank God for this utility, though. All right, it's Bob. All right, we just wrapped up with the uh, KG6HQD speaker wire antenna CW test. I screenshotted the RBNs. Uh, lots of good signals. The antenna is oriented to where the broad side of the antenna is going uh, north and south. The legs are almost exactly east and west. So when we set up Tony's antenna, we'll configure it the same exact way. Um, but yeah, everything, everything went really well. Uh, the battery lasted about almost exactly one hour. My first uh, signal I sent out was about 15.42 and uh, uh, Zulu time, of course, UTC. And I wrapped up right around, uh, what, 1640. So we're, uh, we're, we're gonna tear this down now. We're gonna set the other one up. We had a great QSO with a local guy here. 
and I know there's a couple other people hanging out. There's some solar storms everywhere, but it doesn't matter. Time to set up the uh, the K9 ARV linked dipole that is no longer a linked dipole. I uh, cut the ends off, I had to take the termination points off, I had to tune the antenna. So just for you, Tony, a little bit of fun, it's now maybe the K9 ARV slash KG6 HQD. And somewhere I think the original builder of this maybe should get some credit too, but uh, no longer a link dipole, now it's just a 20 meter fixed dipole. But I'm going to take a smidgen of claim because I had to terminate the ends and tune it. Just kidding, man, don't worry about it. But uh, anyways, that's the plan now, so let's do that. Now, it's been about an hour, we ran the KG6 HQD speaker wire antenna. Now we have Tony's linked dipole, the K9 ARV. Well, it's no longer linked, I took the, I had to tune it, so I had to take the connections off. But let me show you, uh, again, the legs are running uh, east-west, almost exactly. So the broadside of the antenna is facing north-south. Uh, they're at two feet, eight inches, just like the HQD one was on both sides. So they're dead even there. Uh, 12 feet from the apex up there down you can see the coax uh, one thing i did notice with this coax too there, there was a loop on one it just kind of folded on itself and the swr shot up to like 7.1 so you definitely need to take and make sure there's no loops or kinks or knots or anything with this rg316 coax it does it seemed to throw off the uh the readings there so and then of course the other side over there so let me show you now uh, the, uh, the results on the meter, and it's exactly as yesterday. So we have at 14200, 1.3 with a Z of 51. So 14100, we're at 54 on the Z, but 1.6. 14, 1.9, 59. And 14.3, 1 to 1, 52. And the top end, 14.4, 56, 1 to 1. So uh, it appears it's tuned a little high, just like the HQD one. I think it's 14230, but uh, we're spot on. We're, we're totally in the realm. And regardless, even with that, just like the HQD one, I'm going to hit the tuner in the KX2 just to make sure that everything I did with the KG6 HQD antenna, I do with this one. The, uh, the receive through for the CW, I'll be calling CQ and just throw my calls in out there for like an hour. I'll be hopping different frequencies so I can see different uh, RBNs on the RBN network. And also uh, the RG through is set to five. And that's kind of like your squelch, if you will, for those. That's how I interpret it anyways, like a squelch thing. Uh, so anyways, let's uh, get this thing set up. Okay, we're up and running. Uh, got it back up to 10 watts, fresh battery in the KX2. Uh, hit the tuner and uh, we're banging away at 14.040.99. It is 10.09 a.m. Pacific time, um, but I'll show you what it looks like right now. So you can see, uh, putting the 10 watts out, SR, SWR is down there. That's kind of where we're at right now. And we're putting it out on the utility here. Hopefully you can see it's getting a lot of reflection. So we gotta, we got to wipe all these other uh, RBNs out. But when I do, uh, I'll do a screenshot and I'll cut those out so we can see exactly how they looked on the HQD versus the K9 ARV dipole. So uh, we got about an hour banging away and see what happens. Okay, the controlled environment, Antenna Wars part two video uh, complete. And for those of you that are on Twitter, uh, the results were kind of going live out there on Twitter and Reverse Beacon Network, RBN, and you can see the difference. Uh, the cutoff time was, uh, was it 1631, I think it was, uh, to 1710. That's when I stopped uh, stopped the HQD at 1631, started the K9 ARV dipole at 1710, and just finished at 1810, all UTC time. Uh, so we did about an hour each, uh, smashed that freaking uh, PTT, and just put out a signal and CQ nonstop as much as we could, uh, which uh, hammered pretty good. So we're gonna tear this thing down now and go back and put this video together. All right, so we just wrapped up part two, the controlled environment on Antenna Wars. Sounds like a TV show, but it's been a lot of fun. I learned quite a few things. Uh, I had to do some resetting on the KX2. The bottom line is, is uh, both antennas performed very well. 
I would say that they're still a leader in my opinion right now. Uh, that's based upon some of the empirical data uh, from the RBN. There's objective actual tests showing that the speaker wire antenna does have uh, a greater uh, gain out there, I guess, when the greater DBs receive the SNRs on the uh, reverse beacon network were higher. Uh, that data is out there. You can go find it on reversebeacon.net. Just search my call sign, KG6HQD, click DX, and you'll find it there. Uh, it's also, there's some screenshots within this video. A couple of highlighted ones. I was trying to find some of the highs and lows. Uh, you know, there was some variances too, of course, and that's normal with QSB uh, on both antennas. Uh, one in particular, the VE6WZ. At uh, one point in time, I had a, a 19 dB uh, signal, and another time I had a 9 dB on the KG6 HQD speaker wire antenna, whereas Tony had a 41 dB and a 5 dB. So there's some variances there, but that's ham radio. There ain't nothing you can do about that. But when you look through the list that I have posted on there, and I will send these to whoever wants them. I don't know where I'll put them. It's not really that big of a deal. If you want to really look at the data, you can kind of look it up. But uh, VE7CC, uh, the HQD speaker wire antenna was 19 dB. The N5RZ picked up the HQD antenna at 13 dB and picked up Tony's dipole at 9 dB. Uh, the K3PA picked up my HQD wire at 16 dB and Tony's at 6 dB. So one of the things I was looking for was, uh, you know, what were some of the anomalies? You know, like the 41 dB, that's pretty wild, that's pretty cool. Uh, and then some of the, like, where was his higher and where was mine higher? Uh, and then some of the lows and how they offset. So uh, I'll let you break that data down and decide for yourself what it really means. At the end of the day, uh, I think Tony's learned a few things. Uh, he's done some research. He's told me so. I know I've learned a few things, and I hope you guys have learned a few things. Uh, antenna's theory is a lot of fun. And the point with this whole thing was to just go out and make an antenna and to actually uh, deploy it and see how it works and look at that compared to say a store-bought one because it's pretty high quality product the, uh, the ARV dipole uh, the K9 ARV dipole I think Tim Ortiz is the one that, that made it and was selling it on eBay uh, it looks very commercially built and it works really well I mean it's a nice looking dipole it did need to be tuned so if you bought one I would tell you to tune it and then you know there was some arguments about the feed line I think a lot of this argument between Tony and I and I say argument loosely uh, discussion debate dialogue whatever you want to call it uh, revolved around mostly the feed line and he wants to feed his with a 50 ohm coax the RG316 or whichever coax that he's using which is fine um, and then I was using just of course the speaker wire uh, that goes up with the electrician not and out so one and the same I will say this you know tomatoes tomatoes uh, it doesn't really matter what mattered to me was that they both got on the air there are some things that I do still believe that the HQD speaker wire antenna wins on Specifically, it is lighter, it is cheaper, it is more durable, and it works like freaking hell. And then the, the numbers here tell me that it not only works well, it even worked a little bit better in some cases if you look at the data on RBN. Um, so to say that there's so much loss in that line, maybe if you ran that line in an inordinate amount of uh, distance, absolutely, I would probably agree with that, that you're going to start really experiencing that loss. But at 20 meters in these short distances, it's specifically doing what I do. Summits on the air, portable, QRP. This is hands down one of the best antennas that I think is out there. Um, I did notice, and I put it in the video, you mentioned, I mentioned it earlier, uh, on the, the RG316, it folded itself on a loop. When it did that, the SWR shot up. So if you do use this type of antenna, and you do use RG316 or similar class, make sure that you snake out the, uh, the coax and don't have a folded on top of itself. That, that wouldn't work. And that was an easy fix, but just take note of that. Um, both antennas worked really good. I had a great time. It's been a fun video. Uh, Antenna Wars. <laughs> Sounds like something on uh, Discovery Channel. Uh, but I still got to go out and do the field testing. Now that I know both antennas are dead tuned. You saw the results. You saw them tuned. You saw the whole thing so far. And now we need to put it all together and take it out in the field. And what I saw on my last field deployment on the first test run of this, I think that the ARV dipole is a little bit more susceptible to having the numbers skew when it's not set up in an ideal inverted V. Whereas I think there's just a lot more tolerance in the speaker. I don't know why. It's just magic, like my KDMRD said. It's just magic that the setup with the HQD antenna just allows for a lot more 
uh, leeway. It's a little bit more flexible with deploying, deploying antenna, in my opinion, so far. So that's it for right now. That's it for today. Uh, soon enough, I will go out and do the field test again on a live Summits on the Air deployment. That's when I'll bring in the sideband uh, portion of this. Uh, I wanted to do just the controlled environment. So it was just CW, just for the RBN, just for the SNR, and just for the data that's posted for you to look at. We will now do sideband on the next uh, Summits on the Air activation. And I will once again compare both antennas. So I hope you learned something. Uh, please do me a favor, drop some comments in here, ask any kind of questions, put it all in here. Again, if you're not subscribed, subscribe. If you want to find me, find me on Twitter. And then I would also ask on anything that you do, please make sure you leave your call sign and your name, maybe where you're from too, that's helpful. And anything you want to say, it's cool. Uh, I, don't, I don't censor any of the comments unless you're getting inflammatory with somebody else or, or just being stupid. Uh, but other than that, uh, you know, it, it seems like a very polarizing conversation so far on Twitter. Uh, there's been a lot of healthy dialogue. And again, I hope many of you watching and maybe not even participating, hopefully learn something. I'm going to finish with this. Uh, Tony and I have had a lot of messages back and forth, some pointed, some not. Uh, at the end of the day, Tony, uh, still love you like a brother. It's all good in the hood with me on this whole thing, man. Everything is fine. Uh, not just because my antenna, in my opinion, is still eking out ahead. Uh, I could care less. I mean, it didn't matter to me. I was going to use my antenna anyway uh, because it's been working. And like I said, I've got a whole bunch of videos. But I wanted to learn something. And this whole thing started with you sending me that antenna as a gift so that people know out there that you were trying to do me a solid and send me something as a gift and you told me you made big claims that it would smoke the crap out of my my speaker wire antenna and for what'd you say almost two years now uh you've been telling me bro bro you're gonna have better results you're gonna get so many more contacts it's gonna be better and you've also said you get what you pay for um well i didn't pay much for my hqd antenna and i'm getting a hell of a lot out of it i didn't pay anything for your antenna because you gave it to me um, but you know what? Both antennas work. I think they're pretty close, actually. Uh, even, even the DB, plus or minus here and there, I still think they're very close uh, as far as how they actually perform. They're not too far off the mark. So with that, I'll close out. Tony, it's all good on my end, dude. It's been a lot of fun. I think we both learned something. And now I'm going to make some different antennas. I challenge you, Tony, to make an antenna. And uh, let's see if we can do a head-to-head -head on a different antenna or anybody else for that matter. Because I told you earlier... That 2019, I plan on doing a bunch of different antenna tests and build. I've already got a bunch for my antenna book that I plan on factoring in. And I hope you guys stick around for that. Show me some options. Give me some different things you think we should try. And as long as it's not too wild and crazy, I'll put it together. So with that, 73. And uh, I'll catch you on the summit soon for the final test for sideband with these two antennas.